Okay, now we're going to talk about something that's called higher derivatives. Basically, that is just taking the derivative of a derivative. So if we want to write here, let's say we have a function f at x, and then the derivative of that function is f prime at x. Okay. Now if we take the derivative of the derivative, that's what we call the second derivative of the function. And we can write that like this, as f double prime x. Now again, if we take the derivative of this function, that's going to be called the third derivative of the function, of the original function. We can write it like that with three notches. Now say we wanted to take the derivative of this one, uh, which would become the fourth derivative of the original function. We'd write it like this, and we're getting too many notches here, so it's easier just to write this in square brackets. Uh, the fourth derivative of f at x. And we can go up, we can have 5, 10, you can have as many as you want. Um, so basically we just say, uh, to take the nth derivative, we just note it like that, uh, of the function f at x. So let's do some examples here. Um, some of them will go forever, and other ones will stop. So if we say that our uh, f at x is equal to, let's say, cosine of x. Now the derivative of that is equal to negative sine of x. Right? We already know that. Now, if we take the derivative of negative sine of x, we're going to get the derivative of sine of x is cos of x times negative 1. We're going to get negative cosine of x. Now, that's actually the second derivative of the original function. So if we take the derivative, we want to find the third derivative of the original function. We take the derivative of the second derivative. So the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine at x times negative 1. It's going to be positive sine at x. And we'll take the fourth derivative, which is just the derivative of the third derivative. Um, the derivative of sine of x is cos of x. And we're back to where we started. And now this process is just going to repeat itself over and over again up to the nth derivative. You can go as far as you want. Now, if we do this with a, uh, something else, it's going to end. Let's say let's use a, a cubic function. So let's do um, f of x is equal to say 2x cubed uh, minus 3x squared minus 12x plus 12, like that. So the derivative of this function, uh, we can do this. We know that this is going to be 6x squared minus uh, 6x. And now this will be minus 12. And it's plus 0, we just ignore that. Now the second derivative of the function is just going to be the derivative of the first derivative. So we'll just differentiate this again and we'll get 12x minus 6 and that's it. That's the third derivative. If we wanted the, or sorry, the second derivative. If we wanted the third, we could just differentiate again and we would get 12. And then if we wanted the fourth, this would be the last one we could go to. It would just become 0. So what are these good for? Um, these, uh, at least the first derivative and the second derivative will really help us in graphing uh, the, the function. So we can draw our coordinate axis here, something like that. Now, we know because this is a cubic function with a positive uh, coefficient in front of the first term, it's going to go up like this as uh, x gets large, and it's going to go down like this as x gets uh, large, but in the negative direction. That's just a shortcut we can take. If it was negative, it would be the opposite. There would be going up in this direction and down this way. So anyways, um, the first derivative, this is the slope of the, um, of the original function. So if we find where this is equal to 0, we're going to find where the slope of the original function is equal to 0. right? So we want to find the roots of this equation. So what we can do is, let's change colors here. Uh, Let's simplify this a little bit more. We can say this is equal to, if we want to make this equal to 0, equal to 0, um, then we'll pull out a 6 and we'll get x squared minus x um, minus 2. And this is equal to 6 times um, x minus 2 
times x plus 1. Okay, so the roots of this equation uh, equals 0. So this is equal 0 when x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. So we know that somewhere around, um, somewhere at x is equal to 2. Here, let's put in some markers like that. So at x is equal to 2, there's going to be a local maximum or minimum. And x equals negative 1, there's going to be a local maximum or minimum. And we can just plug these numbers into the original equation to find out where they are. And if we do that, we're going to find out that negative 1, um, just to save doing the work, I just did this before, it's going to be uh, at 1 and positive 19. It's going to be way up here. And the other one is going to be at 2 and negative 8, not quite as far down. Okay, so this will we'll say negative 8, and this is positive 18. 19, sorry, positive 19. So we know that, and because we can see it's going down here, it, it can't it can't be going like this, right? And we know that this one is a maximum because it has to go up and then come back down and then go back up like this. So we know that our maximum is here and we know that this is going to be a minimum, right? That's the only way that this makes sense. Now the third, uh, the, sorry, the second derivative, this is kind of cool actually. If you look at this, uh, here we'll connect these, and we'll connect it over here. Oops, I missed that. Connect it over here. Um, if you look at it like this, this is what we call concave down, this shape here. And this is what we call concave up. And so there's going to be some point in the middle in between them somewhere where it switches from concave up. See this whole, this, like if you can imagine this filling with water, this would hold water. And then if we poured water, say right here, water's just gonna drain off. So this, this half over here is concave down and this half is concave up. Um, now there's gonna be some point somewhere around in here where it switches concavity, that's called an inflection point. And the way we find that is where the second derivative is equal to zero. So if we take this down, we'll make this equal to zero. We want to solve for this, and then it'll tell us the x-coordinate of where that is. So we can just simplify this a little bit. We can pull out a six, and we'll get um, six times two x minus one is equal to zero. And the only thing that can make this side equal to zero is if x equals one half. So we know that the inflection point is that x is equal to one half, and then if you take this x equals one half and you plug it back into the original equation for the function, we're going to find out that this inflection point here is actually uh, is at 5.5 for its y value. So there you go. There, that's some uh, information about the higher derivatives. Uh, you can go up to infinite derivatives on some functions, but mostly the first and second one are really useful for calculus one. Uh, and they're really going to help you either draw, locate where the local max or local mins are, and also where there's any inflection points, where it changes concavity.